I believe this is the the what's up guys you already know what's up we're breaking down the final fantasy 16 trailer that was announced today let's not beat around the bush let's jump right into it this is important right here this is the first thing we see the content's captured on pc emulating the ps5 experience i believe they put this out there because there's actually not a solid version of this game anywhere i'm pretty sure this is just a concept for a, a game and i have a lot of reasons to believe that mostly because there's no hud there's no um collision when the character is moving around in the actual gameplay that they're showing off i think it's pretty much the concept of what they want to build so this is probably going to be about seven years in development if you know square enix So this is the first thing we see here. This is a uh, bonfire. This is how pretty much every Final Fantasy game starts next to a fire. It goes back a long time, about 35 years. Plot twist, it's actually not a fire. It's the beginning of the Stormblood trailer from Final Fantasy XIV. This is how exactly that trailer looked. And that's exactly how the main character from Final Fantasy XIV looked as well. You all know the target. Shiva's dominant. So we get a group of four guys here. I'm pretty sure this guy down here in the right hand corner is the main character, but they're saying that the target is Shiva's dominant. I believe that this is um, a, a nation. I think that what we're going to see here in the game is uh, different nations that have different gods, sort of like uh, Final Fantasy Type Zero had. You can see uh, very clearly these guys have scale mail armor on, and they all appear to be some sort of soldier battalion. Fighting for, uh, we can assume from the rest of the trailer, uh, would be Titan. I think they're, they're, it's like a Titan nation versus a Shiva nation. And only the dominant. How do we even know the girl? So you can see here, whatever nation they're fighting against, apparently the Shiva dominant, they wear some sort of like uh, nomadic armor and, and have more a scimitar type weapons, more of a Middle Eastern approach to the, that, that nation. I believe that that's probably a Shiva's army. Will be among Our kind do not question orders. We follow them. And you can see right here, if you just pay attention, we're going to see some uh, perfect NFL style linebacker tackling. Um, his, his head's going to come right here into the armpit. His uh, right arm is going to get wrapped around the body and we're going to see beautiful form here. Like I said, beautiful form. And here's the next thing. If you didn't know that this game's going to come out in about 2028, here's the um, the main giveaway is that it's made by Square Enix. And Square Enix is known for uh, just, just taking their sweet old time with games and pretty much stopping them and restarting them at will whenever they want. Sergeant, let's summon their icon. I here's the first look at Titan. And he said, Sergeant, let's summon their icon. So maybe they are not an army, maybe they're a uh, mercenary group fighting for an army, I'm not sure, but we're about to see uh, the up next, mountain. and there's Shiva, the next primal we see, or icon, or summon, however however you want to call them. Uh, she looks pretty good, pretty standard look for Shiva, looks just like her Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8, Final Fantasy 14 counterparts. And here we see Titan and Shiva absolutely getting into a giant fist fight. It's beautiful. And then uh, on the next screen, we're going to see someone actually get completely wrecked by Titan. There it is. Our foe will not relinquish their mother crystal easily. This will be... So, what we just saw was the main character uh, in a younger state. And then we see this kid. I'm pretty sure this kid is a uh, summoner. But I'm not positive. There's a lot of things that make me believe that we'll see later on here in the trailer. But um, bit of fight. if you can see here, we can see from the character's outfit and the architecture in the background. This is, they're going back to a medieval type approach for the Final Fantasy series, which I'm a big fan of. It's been requested by fans for a long time for them to go back to a more straight fantasy approach. So that's really exciting to see. You should not be out of doors. We have discussed this. Come, Joshua. Your father will be expecting us. I am Joshua's shield. I'm sworn to protect him. So I'm pretty sure this is the very beginning of the game. What we just saw was that kid put his hand on the main character, who apparently is called Joshua Shield, and give him some sort of ability, some sort of energy. I'm pretty sure that the main character here gets his 
power and his magic power from the kid. And hopefully it's not a giant escort mission for 40 hours because that would be a uh, robot honor. So we got our first look at the gameplay here. It's coming up. I think what you're going to see is really acrobatic, or really dynamic combat. The main character appears to be a red mage. He wear, he wields a one-handed sword and uses a lot of magic in between, which would be the typical uh, classic Final Fantasy class, the red mage. But it looks pretty good. It looks pretty fast-paced. Hopefully they can actually come up with something like this. But... What do you mean you refuse? Did you not? Pledge your sword to our cause! What does it matter? It was the Dalmex who drove back the Crusaders in the Battle of the Twin Realms, was it not? Without the blessing of the Mother Crystal, we cannot defend our realm from the spread of the Blight. So here's our first look at the Dragoon. Of course, there's got to be a Dragoon in any classic Final Fantasy setting. Uh, I will say that this is the coolest character in the entire trailer. This guy looks absolutely badass, and that's what a dragoon looks like. If I had to guess, I'm going to say that this is the very beginning of the game, probably the first boss fight, because you can see that the main character is still young here, and we can see that it appears to be the same town that they started in with the, the child protecting the child. And it's all on fire. And we're going to see a couple more scenes from this. And I believe this is the point in the game that's going to create the tragedy that's probably going to propel the plot forward. So, dragoons. Imperial vipers. Do they really mean to invade us? Here we can see the main character's got a different outfit on. Now, this is the first indication we're going to see throughout the rest of the trailer, that the main character either ages or there's a massive time skip. You can also see in that, in that, that last section there that he is, he is way more powerful and way more fast and with a lot more abilities. This kid's just going to have post-traumatic stress for the rest of his life. Um, he just saw what is presumably his father get stabbed to death right in front of him, and you can see the blood splatter all over him. He's probably tasting his father's organs right now. It's the Archduke's son. Phoenix. Ah! So I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that, that what just happened was that kid either summoned Phoenix or Ifrit. It's hard to tell, because it, it, it looked like when he snapped, the, the, the Phoenix came out of the sky, but it also there was, it cut to a, a figure standing there that was half on flames, looked like someone turned into Ifrit. It's, it's hard to say, but obviously we're going to find out when the game comes out in 14 years. The legacy of the crystals. You can see here there's a nice picture of uh, Ifrit about to fight Phoenix, and it's that same that same town, that same architecture and towers that we've seen uh, several times. I'm pretty sure this is the only part of the game that actually exists uh, in, in some capacity or another. Has shaped our history. So here we can see the progression from um, the beginning of the game to presumably the middle of the game or the end game here with the the character Jacob. It's pretty cool. You don't you don't see a whole lot of aging in Final Fantasy characters, um, but I do like that there there appears to be like I said either a time skip or 
some sort of some sort of progression in a fable type manner between these two characters or the, the, between these two timelines. Um, but let's finish it up. And here we get the uh, the beautiful artwork. Of course, this is in every Final Fantasy game. The artwork is very focused around the Phoenix fighting Ifrit in this one. Or maybe that, that actually, yeah, that's definitely Ifrit. Now, usually, the, if you guys don't know, the artwork is a pivotal part of the game that it takes place in. So, I'm really excited for it. Um, again, I'm trying not to think about it too much. This game is not coming out anytime soon, guys. If you think it's coming out anytime soon... I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is not how Square Enix works. We are probably going to be waiting at least five years. I, I'd say that this game's release date might be in 2025. They just not have a good track record with development recently. Um, remember, they still have to develop Final Fantasy VII, and they're also developing presumably the next Kingdom Hearts game, and probably this as well. So it's a it's a tall task. Hopefully, they you know split their teams up and are able to get it out in a decent amount of time and don't don't cut it in half and give us a, a half-assed game sort of like Final Fantasy 15 was. But I'm excited because this is the first Final Fantasy game I've actually seen debut live. Uh, you know, Final Fantasy 13, 14, and 15 were all debuted at the same time because back then 15 was versus 13. And they came out, you know, 10 years later. And I, that was before I even was old enough to uh, to watch E3 live. I mean, I was old enough. I just didn't know it existed, as did most people. But... That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And, um, yeah. See ya.